Chapters twenty nine through thirty five of Genesis from the World English Bible. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Alethea Burgess, Sogipo, South Korea. Genesis from the World English Bible. Chapters twenty nine through thirty five. Then Jacob went on his journey, and came to the land of the children of the east. He looked, and behold, a well in the field, and behold, three flocks of sheep lying there by it. For out of that well they watered the flocks. The stone on the well's mouth was large. There all the flocks were gathered. They rolled the stone from the well's mouth, and watered the sheep, and put the stone again on the well's mouth in its place. Jacob said to them, my relatives, where are you from? They said, We are from Haran. He said to them, Do you know Laban, the son of Nahor? They said, We know him. He said to them, Is it well with him? They said, It is well. See, Rachel, his daughter, is coming with the sheep. He said, Behold, it is still the middle of the day, not time to gather the livestock together. Water the sheep, and go and feed them. They said, We can't, until all the flocks are gathered together, and they roll the stone from the well's mouth, then we water the sheep. While he was yet speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she kept them. It happened when Jacob saw Rachel the daughter of Laban his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban his mother's brother, that Jacob went near, and rolled the stone from the well's mouth, and watered the flock of Laban his mother's brother. Jacob kissed Rachel, and lifted up his voice, and wept. Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother, and that he was Rebekah's son. She ran and told her father. It happened when Laban heard the news of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet Jacob, and embraced him, and kissed him, and brought him to his house. Jacob told Laban all these things. Laban said to him, Surely you are my bone and my flesh. He lived with him for a month. Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my brother, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what will your wages be? Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were weak, but Rachel was beautiful in form and attractive. Jacob loved Rachel. He said, I will serve you for seven years for Rachel, your younger daughter. Laban said, it is better that I give her to you than I should give her to another man. Stay with me. Jacob served seven years for Rachel. They seemed to him but a few days for the love he had for her. Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go into her. Laban gathered together all of the men of that place and made a feast. It happened in the evening that he took Leah his daughter and brought her to him. He went into her. Laban gave Zilpah his handmaid to his daughter Leah for a handmaid. It happened in the morning that, behold, it was Leah. He said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Didn't I serve you for Rachel? Why, then, have you deceived me? Laban said, It is not done so in our place to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill the week of this one, and we will give you the other also for the service which you will serve with me yet seven other years. Jacob did so, and fulfilled her week. He gave him Rachel his daughter as wife. Laban gave to Rachel his daughter Billa, his handmaid, to be her handmaid. He went in also to Rachel, and he loved also Rachel more than Leah, and served with him yet seven other years. Yahweh saw that Leah was hated, and he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Leah conceived, and bore a son, and she named him Reuben. For she said, Because Yahweh has looked at my affliction, for now my husband will love me. She conceived again, and bore a son, and said, Because Yahweh has heard that I am hated, he has therefore given me this son also. She named him Simeon. She conceived again, and bore a son, said, Now this time my husband will be joined to me, because I have borne him three sons. Therefore his name was called Levi. She conceived again, and bore a son. She said, This time I will praise Yahweh. Therefore she named him Judah. Then she stopped bearing. Chapter 30 
When Rachel saw that she bore Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister. She said to Jacob, Give me children, or else I will die. Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel, and he said, Am I in God's place, who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? She said, Behold, my maiden Billah, go into her, that she may bear on my knees, and I also may obtain children by her. She gave him Billah, her handmaid, as a wife, and Jacob went into her. Billah conceived and bore Jacob a son. Rachel said, God has judged me, and has also heard my voice, and has given me a son. Therefore called she his name Dan. Billa, Rachel's handmaid, conceived again, and bore Jacob a second son. Rachel said, With mighty wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister, and have prevailed. She named him Naphtali. When Leah saw that she had finished bearing, she took Zilpah, her handmaid, and gave her to Jacob as a wife. Zilpah, Leah's handmaid, bore Jacob a son. Leah said, How fortunate! She named him Gad. Zilpah, Leah's handmaid, bore Jacob a second son. Leah said, Happy am I, for the daughters will call me happy. She named him Asher. Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest, and found mandrakes in the field, and brought them to his mother, Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Please give me some of your son's mandrakes. She said to her, Is it a small matter that you have taken away my husband? Would you take away my son's mandrakes also? Rachel said, Therefore he will lie with you to-night for your son's mandrakes. Jacob came in from the field that evening, and Leah went out to meet him, and said, You must come in to me, for I have surely hired you with my son's mandrakes. He lay with her that night. God listened to Leah, and she conceived, and bore Jacob a fifth son. Leah said, God has given me my hire, because I gave my handmaid to my husband. She named him Issachar. Leah conceived again, and bore a sixth son to Jacob. Leah said, God has endowed me with a good dowry. Now my husband will live with me, because I have borne him six sons. She named him Zebulun. Afterwards she bore a daughter, and named her Dinah. God remembered Rachel, and God listened to her, and opened her womb. She conceived, bore a son, and said, God has taken away my reproach. She named him Joseph, saying, May Yahweh add another son to me. It happened, when Rachel had borne Joseph, that Jacob said to Laban, Send me away, that I may go to my own place and to my country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served you, and let me go, for you know my service with which I have served you. Laban said to him, If now I have found favor in your eyes, stay here, for I have divined that Yahweh has blessed me for your sake. He said, Appoint me your wages, and I will give it. He said to him, You know how I have served you, and how your livestock have fared with me. For it was little which you had before I came, and it has increased to a multitude. Yahweh has blessed you wherever I turned. Now when will I provide for my own house also? He said, What shall I give you? Jacob said, You shall not give me anything. If you will do this thing for me, I will again feed your flock and keep it. I will pass through all your flock to-day, removing from there every speckled and spotted one, and every black one among the sheep, and the spotted and speckled among the goats. This will be my hire. So my righteousness will answer for me hereafter, when you come concerning my hire that is before you. Every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goats, and black among the sheep that might be with me, will be counted stolen. Laban said, Behold, let it be according to your word. That day he removed the male goats that were streaked and spotted, and all the female goats that were speckled and spotted, every one that had white in it, and all the black ones among the sheep, and gave them into the hands of his sons. He set three days' journey between himself and Jacob, and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. Jacob took to himself rods of fresh poplar, almond, plane tree, peeled white streaks in them, and made the white appear which was in the rods. He set the rods which he had peeled opposite the flocks in the gutters in the watering troughs where the flocks came to drink. They conceived when they came to drink. The flocks conceived before the rods, and the flocks produced streaked, speckled, and spotted. 
Jacob separated the lambs, and set the faces of the flocks toward the streaked and all the black in the flock of Laban, and he put his own droves apart, and didn't put them into Laban's flock. It happened, whenever the stronger of the flock conceived, that Jacob laid the rods before the eyes of the flock in the gutters, that they might conceive among the rods. But when the flock was feeble, he didn't put them in. So the feebler were Laban's, and the stronger Jacob's. The man increased exceedingly, and had large flocks, female servants and male servants, and camels and donkeys. CHAPTER Thirty One. He heard the words of Laban's son, saying, Jacob has taken away all that was our father's. From that which was our father's has he gotten all this wealth. Jacob saw the expression on Laban's face, and, behold, it was not toward him as before. Yahweh said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers, and to your relatives, and I will be with you. Jacob sent, and called Rachel and Leah to the field to his flock, and said to them, I see the expression on your father's face, that it is not toward me as before, but the God of my father has been with me. You know that I have served your father with all of my strength. Your father has deceived me, and changed my wages ten times, but God didn't allow him to hurt me. If he said this, the speckled will be your wages, then all the flock bore speckled. If he said this, the streaked will be your wages, then all the flock bore streaked. Thus God has taken away your father's livestock, and given them to me. It happened during mating season that I lifted my eyes and saw in a dream, and behold, the male goats which leaped on the flock were streaked, speckled, and grizzled. The angel of God said to me in the dream, Jacob, and I said, Here I am. He said, Now lift up your eyes, and behold, all the male goats which leap on the flock are streaked, speckled, and grizzled, for I have seen all that Laban does to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar, where you vowed a vow to me. Now arise, get out from this land, and return to the land of your birth. Rachel and Leah answered him, Is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Aren't we accounted by him as foreigners? For he has sold us, and he has also quite devoured our money. For all the riches which God has taken away from our father, that is ours and our children's. Now then, whatever God has said to you, do. Then Jacob rose up, and set his sons and his wives on the camels, and he took away all his livestock, and all his possessions which he had gathered, including the livestock which he had gained in Padan Aram, to go to Isaac his father to the land of Canaan. Now Laban had gone to shear his sheep, and Rachel stole the teraphim that were her father's. Jacob deceived Laban the Syrian, in that he didn't tell him that he was running away. So he fled with all that he had. He rose up, passed over the river, and set his face toward the mountain of Gilead. Laban was told on the third day that Jacob had fled. He took his relatives with him, and pursued after him seven days' journey. He overtook him in the mountain of Gilead. God came to Laban the Syrian in a dream of the night, and said to him, Take heed to yourself that you don't speak to Jacob, either good or bad. Laban caught up with Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the mountain, and Laban with his relatives encamped in the mountain of Gilead. Laban said to Jacob, What have you done that you have deceived me and carried away my daughters like captives of the sword? Why did you flee secretly and deceive me, and didn't tell me that I might have sent you away with mirth and with songs, with tambourine and with harp, and didn't allow me to kiss my sons and my daughters? Now you have done foolishly. It is in the power of my hand to hurt you. But the God of your father spoke to me last night, saying, Take heed to yourself that you don't speak to Jacob, either good or bad. Now you want to be gone, because you have greatly longed for your father's house. But why have you stolen my gods? Jacob answered Laban, Because I was afraid, for I said, Lest you should take your daughters from me by force. Any one you find your gods with shall not live. Before our relatives, discern what is yours with me, and take it. For Jacob didn't know that Rachel had stolen them. Laban went into Jacob's tent, into Leah's tent, and into the tent of the two female servants, but he didn't find them. He went out of Leah's tent, and entered into Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the teraphim, put them inside the camel's saddle, and sat on them. Laban felt all about the tent, but didn't find them. She said to her father, 
Don't let my lord be angry that I can't rise up before you, for I'm having my period. He searched, but didn't find the teraphim. Jacob was angry and argued with Laban. Jacob answered Laban, What is my trespass? What is my sin that you have hotly pursued after me? Now that you have felt around in all my stuff, what have you found of all your household stuff? Set it here before my relatives and your relatives, that they may judge between us two. These twenty years I have been in your house. I served you fourteen years for your two daughters, and six years for your flock, and you have changed my wages ten times. Unless the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac had been with me, surely now you would have sent me away empty. God has seen my affliction and the labor of my hands, and rebuked you last night. Laban answered Jacob, The daughters are my daughters, the children are my children, the flocks are my flocks, and all that you see is mine. And what can I do this day to these my daughters, or to their children whom they have borne? Now come, let us make a covenant, you and I, and let it be for a witness between me and you. Jacob took a stone and set it up for a pillar. Jacob said to his relatives, Gather stones. They took stones and made a heap. They ate there by the heap. Laban called it Jegar Sahadutha, but Jacob called it Galid. Laban said, This heap is witness between me and you this day. Therefore it was named Galid, and Mizpah, for he said, Yahweh watch between you and me, when we were absent one from another. If you afflict my daughters, or if you take wives besides my daughters, no man is with us. Behold, God is witness between me and you. Laban said to Jacob, See this pillar, and see this pillar which I have set between me and you. May this heap be a witness, and the pillar be a witness, that I will not pass over this heap to you, and that you will not pass over this heap and this pillar for me for harm. The God of Abraham, and the God of Nahor, the God of their father, judge between us. Then Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac. Jacob offered a sacrifice in the mountain, and called his relatives to eat bread. They ate bread, and stayed all night in the mountain. Early in the morning... Laban rose up, and kissed his sons and his daughters, and blessed them. Laban departed and returned to his place. CHAPTER Thirty Two. Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. When he saw them, Jacob said, This is God's army. He called the name of that place Mahanaim. Jacob sent messengers in front of him to Esau, his brother, to the land of Seir, in the field of Edom. He commanded them, saying, This is what you shall tell my lord Esau. This is what your servant Jacob says. I have lived as a foreigner with Laban, and stayed until now. I have cattle, donkeys, flocks, male servants and female servants. I have sent to tell my lord that I may find favor in your sight. The messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to your brother Esau. Not only that, but he comes to meet you, and four hundred men with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid, and was distressed. He divided the people who were with him, and the flocks, and the herds, and the camels, into two companies. And he said, If Esau comes to the one company, and strikes it, then the company which is left will escape. Jacob said, God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, Yahweh, who said to me, Return to your country and to your relatives, and I will do you good. I am not worthy of the least of all the loving-kindnesses, and of all the truth which you have shown to your servant, for with just my staff I passed over this Jordan, and now I have become two companies. Please deliver me from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he come and strike me, and the mothers with the children. You said, I will surely do you good, and make your seed as the land of the sea, which can't be numbered because there are so many." He lodged there that night, and took from that which he had with him a present for Esau, his brother, two hundred female goats and twenty male goats, two hundred ewes and twenty rams, thirty milk camels and their colts, forty cows, ten bulls, twenty female donkeys, and ten foals. He delivered them into the hands of his servants, every herd by itself, and said to his servants, Pass over before me, and put a space between herd and herd. He commanded the foremost, saying, 
when esau my brother meets you and asks you saying who are you where are you going who are these before you then you shall say they are your servant jacob's it is a present sent to my lord esau behold he also is behind us he commanded also the second and the third and all that followed the herd saying this is how you shall speak to esau when you find him you shall say not only that but behold your servant jacob is behind us for he said i will appease him with the present that goes before me and afterward i will see his face perhaps he will accept me so the present passed over before him and he himself lodged that night in the camp he rose up that night and took his two wives and sent two handmaids and his eleven sons and passed over the fork of the jabbok he took them and sent them over the stream and sent over that which he had jacob was left alone and wrestled with a man there until the breaking of the day when he saw that he didn't prevail against him he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of jacob's thigh was strained as he wrestled the man said let me go for the day breaks jacob said i won't let you go unless you bless me he said to him what is your name he said jacob he said your name will no longer be called jacob but israel for you have fought with god and with men and have prevailed jacob asked him please tell me your name he said why is it that you ask what my name is he blessed him there Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for he said, I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. The sun rose on him as he passed over Peniel, and he limped because of his thigh. Therefore the children of Israel don't eat the sinew of the hip, which is on the hollow of the thigh, to this day because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew of the hip. Chapter 33 Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, Esau was coming, and with him four hundred men. He divided the children between Leah, Rachel, and the two handmaids. He put the handmaids and their children in front, Leah and her children after, and Rachel and Joseph at the rear. He himself passed over in front of them, and bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. Esau ran to meet him, embraced him, fell on his neck, kissed him, and they wept. He lifted up his eyes, and saw the women and children, and said, Who are these with you? He said, The children whom God has graciously given your servant. Then the handmaids came near with their children, and they bowed themselves. Leah also and her children came near, and bowed themselves. After them Jacob came near with Rachel, and they bowed themselves. Esau said, What do you mean by all this company which I met? Jacob said, to find favor in the sight of my lord. Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Let that which you have be yours. Jacob said, Please, no, if I have now found favor in your sight, then receive my present at my hand, because I have seen your face, as one sees the face of God, and you were pleased with me. Please take the gift I have brought to you, because God has dealt graciously with me, and because I have enough. He urged him, and he took it. Esau said, Let us take our journey, and let us go, and I will go before you. Jacob said to him, My lord knows that the children are tender, and that the flocks and herds with me have their young, and if they overdrive them one day all the flocks will die. Please let my lord pass over before his servant, and I will lead on gently, according to the pace of the livestock that are before me, and according to the pace of the children, until I come to my lord at Seir. Esau said, Let me now leave you with some of the folk who are with me. He said, Why? Let me find favor in the sight of my lord. So Esau returned that day on his way to Seir. Jacob traveled to Succoth, built himself a house, and made shelters for his livestock. Therefore the name of the place is called Succoth. Jacob came in peace to the city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan, when he came from Padan Aram and encamped before the city. He bought the parcel of ground where he had spread his tent, at the hand of Hamor, Shechem's father, for one hundred pieces of money. He erected an altar there, and called it El Elohe Israel. Chapter 34 Dinah, the daughter of Leah, whom she bore to Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. Shechem the son of Hamor the Hivite, 
The prince of the land saw her. He took her, lay with her, and humbled her. His soul joined to Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the young lady, and spoke kindly to the young lady. Shechem spoke to his father Hamor, saying, Get me this young lady as a wife. Now Jacob heard that he had defiled Dinah his daughter, and his sons were with his livestock in the field. Jacob held his peace until they came. Hamor the father of Shechem went out to Jacob to talk with him. The sons of Jacob came in from the field when they heard it. The men were grieved, and they were very angry, because he had done folly in Israel lying with Jacob's daughter, a which thing ought not to be done. Hamor talked with them, saying, The soul of my son Shechem longs for your daughter. Please give her to him as a wife. Make marriages with us. Give your daughters to us, and take our daughters for yourselves. You shall dwell with us, and the land will be before you. Live and trade in it, and get possessions in it. Shechem said to her father and to her brothers, Let me find favor in your eyes, and whatever you will tell me I will give. Ask me for a great amount for a dowry, and I will give whatever you ask of me. But give me the young lady as a wife. The sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Hamor his father with deceit, and spoke, because he had defiled Dinah their sister, and said to them, We can't do this thing, to give our sister to one who is uncircumcised, for that is a reproach to us. Only on this condition will we consent to you. If you will be as we are, that every male of you be circumcised, then we will give our daughters to you, and we will take your daughters to us, and we will dwell with you, and we will become one people. But if you will not listen to us, to be circumcised, then we will take our sister, and we will be gone. Their words pleased Hamor and Shechem, Hamor's son. The young man didn't wait to do this thing, because he had delight in Jacob's daughter, and he was honored above all in the house of his father. Hamor and Shechem, his son, came to the gate of the city, and talked with the men of their city, saying, These men are peaceful with us. Therefore let them live in the land and trade in it. For behold, the land is large enough for them. Let us take their daughters to us for wives, and let us give them our daughters. Only on this condition will the men consent to live with us, to become one people. If every male among us is circumcised, as they are circumcised, won't their livestock and their possessions and all their animals be ours? Only let us give our consent to them, and they will dwell with us. All who went out of the gate of his city listened to Hamor and to Shechem his son, and every male was circumcised, all who went out of the gate of his city. It happened on the third day, when they were sore, that two of Jacob's sons, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brothers, each took his sword, came upon the unsuspecting city, and killed all the males. They killed Hamor and Shechem his son with the edge of the sword, and took Dinah out of Shechem's house and went away. Jacob's sons came on the dead and plundered the city, because they had defiled their sister. They took their flocks, their herds, their donkeys, that which was in the city, that which was in the field, and all their wealth. They took captive all their little ones and their wives, and took as plunder everything that was in the house. Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have troubled me to make me odious to the inhabitants of this land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites. I am few in number. They will gather themselves together against me and strike me, and I will be destroyed, I and my house. They said, Should he deal with our sister as a prostitute? Chapter 35 God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and live there. Make an altar to God, who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau your brother. Then Jacob said to his household, and to all who were with him, Put away the foreign gods that are among you, purify yourselves, change your garments. Let us arise and go up to Bethel. I will make there an altar to God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and was with me in the way which I went. They gave to Jacob all the foreign gods which were in their hands, and the rings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. They traveled, and a terror of God was on the cities that were around them and they didn't pursue the sons of Jacob. So Jacob came to Luz, that is, Bethel, which is in the land of Canaan, he and all the people who were with him. He built an altar there, and called the place El Bethel, because there God was revealed to him, when he fled from the face of his brother. Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died, and she was buried below Bethel under the oak, and its name was called Elon Bakuth. God appeared to Jacob again, and when he came from Padan Aram, and blessed him. God said to him, 
Your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be Jacob any more, but your name will be Israel. He named him Israel. God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations will be from you, and kings will come out of your body. The land which I give to Abraham and Isaac, I will give it to you, and to your seed after you I will give the land. God went up from him in that place where he spoke with him. Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he spoke with him, a pillar of stone. He poured out a drink offering on it, and poured oil on it. Jacob called the name of the place where God spoke with him Bethel. They traveled from Bethel. There was still some distance to come to Ephrath. And Rachel travailed. She had hard labor. When she was in hard labor, the midwife said to her, Don't be afraid, for now you will have another son. It happened, as her soul was departing, for she died, that she named him Benoni, but his father named him Benjamin. Rachel died and was buried in the way to Ephrath, the same as Bethlehem. Jacob set up a pillar on her grave, the same as the pillar of Rachel's grave to this day. Israel traveled and spread his tent beyond the tower of Eder. It happened while Israel lived in that land that Reuben went and lay with Billah, his father's concubine, and Israel heard of it. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve, the sons of Leah, Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun the sons of Rachel, Joseph and Benjamin, the sons of Billah, Rachel's handmaid, Dan and Naphtali, the sons of Zilpah, Leah's handmaid, Gad and Asher. These are the sons of Jacob, who were born to him in Padan Aram. Jacob came to Isaac his father, to Mamre, to Kiriath Arba, which is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac lived as foreigners. The days of Isaac were one hundred eighty years. Isaac gave up the spirit and died, and was gathered to his people, old and full of days. Esau and Jacob, his sons, buried him. End of chapters 29 through 35